نشهد أن محمد عبد الله رسوله أمينه على وحيه وخيرته من خلقه بلغ رسالته أدى أمانته ونصح أمته وكشف بإذن ربه الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم صدق الله العظيم Respected brothers and sisters this is a huge reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huge privilege from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Alhamdulillah, we are in the month of Ramadan. The last few, last few years, we were crying for the month of Ramadan. We are unable to come to the masjid to pray salah, to do our qiyam, to do salah to tarawih. And here it is, we are, alhamdulillah, in the situation that we are able to come to the masjid and we are able to, alhamdulillah, attend the jama'ah. This is a huge privilege for us. Say, alhamdulillah. While we are sitting here, we also observe. We observed many people used to come to the first row, first sufuf for salah. And they are no more. They have returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even today, we prayed Salatul Janaza for many people. Here and many other masjid across the UK. They were not fortunate to do some ibadah in the month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called them away. So my brothers and sisters, this is the first reminder that I need to remind myself and my brothers and sisters, we need to be grateful to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kindly given us this tawfiq to achieve the most out of the month of Ramadan. And secondly, my brothers and sisters, the ayah that I've recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم. The day when we are going to be in front of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will be asking every single account of our life. That day Allah سبحانه وتعالى is not going to check our bank balance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to check how many children we had. This pride, this money, this wealth, this power is nothing is going to come into work. It's only one thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is accepting is going to be قلب سليم The sound mind, the sound qalb. My today's topic is going to be on that particular aspect of our qalb. The month of Ramadan here is going to help us to make our qalb qalb salim, purified, nurtured, nice, presentable heart that, will be, that we will be able to inshallah be with in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So qalb, the letter qaf lam ba, wherever you find these three letters together, it stands. So if you remove this and make it other round, you call, we call it qalb. This page is here in this way now, if we turn it over, it calls qalb. Why qalb is qalb? Because it turns, it turns over. It goes, it changes. So Qalb is such a sophisticated thing that changes. 
If you want to change it to the right way, it will be changed to the right way. If it otherwise, if you want to change it to the left way and the wrong way, it will be changed into, into the wrong way. Now, here you are the person who has the key to change it to the right or to the, to the left. The question is, how you are going to use that key? Are you going to change it, nurture it to the right way or wrong? This is the month of Ramadan, my brothers and sisters. To nurture this qalb, to make this qalb into the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept it. I will be insha'Allah sharing with you three procedures, three things. To make this qalb into the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept. And the first thing is niyyah, intention. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Anything that we do in this world, my brothers and sisters, if this is not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it doesn't have, it doesn't carry any value, nothing, zero. There's a long hadith. Ulamas will be coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Oh Allah, I have done so and so and so. I have done X, Y, Z. I have called so many people to, to your deen. I have decided whole night Quran. And I have stood up for the right and, and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, You lied. Can you imagine? You have dedicated your whole life to do something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reject it saying you lied. So if we have done so much hard work to achieve something and our account is zero, how unfortunate we are. If we have worked hard to earn a good salary at the, month, at the end of year maybe 40k, 50k and the year is past. At the end of year, we found our bank account just quickly checking, opening the app and found it's zero. All the digits are zero. It's going to shock you. You are going to sh be shocked. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to pay my, uh, my, my children's food? And so on. So my brothers and sisters, if we are doing so much hard work and at the end of the day, our account is zero, we are going to be in a shock. So the key thing here, my brothers and sisters, intention. Our intention has to be right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ we have only been instructed to do something, whether it is little or big, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Akhlis deenaka yakfika al-amalu al-qaleel. You try making your intention correct, your deen correct, your understanding correct, what you are doing it for, then even a little amount of work, inshaAllah, will come to you as a mountain sum. So my first reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters, let's make our intention correct. Ramadan has started. This month, everything that we do, we'll be making it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any fasting that we are doing, it should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Suhoor we are doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're doing iftar for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are eating suhoor, it is sunnah to make the suhoor at the last minute. Why? Even you have your food and drink in front of you. You know it's just clicking. The time is clicking now. Khalas. I'm stopping it. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to accept it if I cross this boundary, cross this time limit. So, without consciousness, or with consciousness, you are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see from you and me. Iftar, so many items in front of you. Drink, whole day, you were thirsty, you, were thirsty. you couldn't drink. Now in front of you, mashallah, nice juice. And so many, so many, so much delicious food. You're not eating. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to accept it if you stop before. As soon as adhan goes, you stop. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept it now. Subhanallah. So everything that you do, just to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this is the case, then inshallah, anything that we do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kindly preserve it in our account. This is my first reminder. Second reminder, my brothers and sisters. This qalb, <coughs> it doesn't accept anything and preserve anything that is not right. This ruh, the hayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is amru rabbi. Yas'alunaka anil ruh, qulil ruhu min amri rabbi. The life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is the name of ruh. This ruh is gone, khalas. There's nothing to work anymore. The SIM card that you have, if you're just taking it off, this, this set, this handset is worthless. It's not going to work anything. You can't make any call. You, you can't make any connection. But if you take it away and put it in another one and you start connecting, inshallah, you'll find the connection. So this ruh, if this is here in the right way, you will find the connection between yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this qalb, my brothers and sisters, in the month of Ramadan, this month came to help us to purify, to clean our heart. And this heart, inshallah, will be clean with a couple of things. If we clean it, then we put something, it will remain clean. If this is unclean, whatever we put in that qalb is not going to, is contaminated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to accept this. So first and foremost, after the niyyah, we need to clean that heart. How to clean our heart? This is the question now. So to clean our heart, we need to first make tawbah and istighfar. Tawbah, such a powerful thing, my brothers and sisters. Whoever depends from, from the sins, as though he doesn't have any sin, he did never committed any sin. We have done so many wrong things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive everything. It's only with tawbah. This tawbah, my brothers and sisters, there are some conditions. We have to be really, we have to be really remorseful of the things that we have done wrong. And sincerely make intention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make his sincere promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, you have extended my life. In my previous life, I have done so and so wrong. Insha'Allah from now on, I'm completely removing that part. I'm just staying away from that. Insha'Allah from now on, my whole life is going to be in the right way, the way you have asked me to, do, to be in. This is the intention. This is the tawbah. If we can make this tawbah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive all this. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ If we have done anything wrong, and we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, afterward, afterward, we started completely changing our life and we started leading our life according to the Sunnah and Quran and we stayed fast with the A'mal Salihah good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kindly will 
turn all this bad deeds that we have done previously into good deeds. Such a beautiful promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for us to come, to run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, to clean our heart, we need to start with tawbah. And the second thing, this is very hard. This is very hard. But if we can do this, this is going to make our life so clean, our, our heart so clean that you can't even imagine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. I have done this wrong. Oh Allah, forgive me. But your neighbor done something wrong to you, maybe yesterday, still you are carrying that pain inside and you can't forgive. Your brother, maybe he has done something wrong to you, you can't forgive. Your wife done something wrong to you and you can't forgive. You just, you, even you are threatening her to do something nasty. And even we have something in our mind. Okay, I'm just for, forgetting. You have done something wrong to me, I'm forgetting, but I'm not forgiving you. We say it many times. Maybe my, my business partner, he has done something wrong to you. And you always tell him, do you know what? You just messed my life. You messed completely my plan. Now I am in a bad situation because of you. I will forgive the whole world, but not you. It's a matter of money. It's a matter of maybe some pride. If we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness in the day of judgment when no one else will be able to forgive and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you power to forgive someone and you can't forgive and you are expecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me and you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like being selfish. If you are selfish that we are, we are not going to forgive that person, that person and that person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be forgiving us. This is very, very difficult. This is challenging part, my brothers and sisters. If we look at the nice story of Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, such a beautiful story I always share with my brothers and sisters. And I am always inspired by that nice story. I always try sharing this story with my children as well. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, beloved Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was in a gathering with his sahabi in the masjid in the masjid in Nabawi. And a layman, very ordinary person, putting his shoes under his armpit, just walking inside, just walking into the masjid. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa stopped his khutbah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa stopped his lecture, his dance, and he looked at him. And sahaba, they were curious, why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa stopped his dance? What is the reason? Then he said, من سره أن ينظر إلى رجل من أهل الجنة فلينظر إلى هذا. Whoever want to be pleased by looking a person who is going to be inshallah in Jannah, he should look at that person. So everyone looked at him and he was layman, a very ordinary person, Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas رضي الله تعالى عنه. Second day, same thing happened. He entered the masjid keeping his sandal under the armpit and walking nicely inside. Rasulullah looked at him and said the same thing. Whoever wants to be pleased by looking, to a, looking into a, a person who is going to be in Jannah should look at that person. That was Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqas After the third day, Abu Musa Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was very keen to know the reason. But he didn't ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather, he uh, approached Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, O oh, Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would you allow me to be your guest for a few days? And he said, why not? Yes, of course, inshallah. So he followed Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he went to his house, he stayed there for a couple of days. 
to see what special he what speciality in him that makes him the the man of jannah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam given him that glad tiding already so he was trying to find out that special thing so he couldn't find anything in the midnight he used to wake up abu musa shari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu to to hear something if there's any noise of somebody making wudu or maybe if there's a noise of maybe somebody's crying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing so if he's not making he's not waking up in the middle of night and he's not praying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that last part of night then i don't see anything special in him why rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam given him that good name then he approached him again o prophet of uh, o sahabi of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has given you the glad tiding that you are going to be among those uh, being in Jannah. But what is the reason? What is the speciality? I couldn't find anything. D you didn't make uh, something special, any special ibadah. You woke up in the middle? No, you didn't. Did you pray tahajjud? No, you didn't. You're just making wudu like me and going to the salah, you know, attending jama'ah. That's all you are doing. I haven't seen anything special. Can you tell me something? He also was confused now. I don't see anything that I do special. Then he started thinking, maybe one thing I do always, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes it, that is, every night before I go to sleep, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I have forgiven anyone or everyone, if anyone has done wrong to me. And please forgive them. Can you imagine? Before sleeping, he's asking for forgiveness if anyone does something wrong to him. That was the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given him that glad tiding he is going to be in Jannah, inshallah. So my brothers and sisters, to purify our heart, to clean our heart, First thing we said is niya. Anything that we do, we do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And second thing we said is we need to do tawbah. And third thing, we need to forgive. Now, this heart is ready to accept anything that you are pouring in. After you have cleaned, after you have cleaned completely your heart, now you will feel you will feel in yourself you are so inclined with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything that you do you will feel you will feel the sweetness of this ibadah when you stand for salah you are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are standing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we do not feel it why because our heart is polluted is polluted with so many things but when it is clean now you stand and close your eyes, you will feel connected. Your heart is connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are in sujood. You will feel that you are truly talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are raising your hand, you are crying. You will feel connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the month of Ramadan is special for you and me, my brothers and sisters. Let's clean our heart. And then, any good deeds we offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep it for you, nurture you, nurture for you that good deeds, and you will see a mountain sum of ibadah and, uh, and the reward that you left for you akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to do, to, to do the best in this month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to clean our heart and pour it with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I say this to you and I ask for Allah to you and for all the Muslims from all the people who have forgiven you and for your forgiveness. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.